Hey guys, it's Mindy. Thank you again for watching my channel, Mindy's Coral Reef. And today, I want to discuss with you aquascaping your aquarium and the many things that you have to think about when it comes to building your tank for the first time or giving your tank a complete makeover. And then after we go over all that, I want to also show you a few very special things that I picked up this past weekend, including some fish and some corals. So stay tuned. All right, so let's get to it. So a fresh aquascaping of your aquarium is like coming home to a clean house. It's an amazing feeling when you look at your aquarium and everything is like spotless. It is a really good feeling. So you've got to love it. My 125 gallon, which is right behind me, has been the same. I haven't changed anything since I first set it up about 14 months ago. So the last video that I did, which was, you know, showing you the insides and, you know, how I everything that functions the tank itself from you know what's underneath the cabinet to the lighting and everything else someone had made a comment about me needing to aquascape my tank which I knew I already knew I needed to do and it was something that was on my to-do list I just needed to find the time to do it so I actually sat down and I did it so my tank is newly revamped it's been remodeled I just went through the entire tank tore it apart redid the whole thing repositioned all the corals and put in some new sand and everything like that so I'm gonna show you before which you've probably seen have you have seen some before clips and then show you after of how I've done it and where I put things and what it looks like now so in this section of my tank from before you can see there's a lot of dirtiness uh, there's a lot of overgrowth a lot of the corals are kind of growing on top of each other uh, it just looks kind of dirty. Here you see a lot of the corals are really close to each other. Uh, there's not much sand room. Again, things look dirty. There needs to be more sand in general. Everything is just on top of each other. And here you can see there's an overgrowth of Kenya trees. Those things grow like weeds. My mani is just kind of growing into the star polyps. And again, it just looks dirty. So when you're like remodeling your tank or, you know, uh, giving it like a revamp, you got to think of it like, like, winter like like your landscaping like winter's over you know the snow just melted and now it's time to clean up the yard so you have like leaves and branches and just a whole bunch of stuff that needs to be picked up and you know just you need new mulch down and you need the grass cut and it, everything just needs to be redone so that's kind of like your fish tank you need to go in there you need to take away a lot of the rock a lot of the clutter um, you need to get rid of some of the dead corals. You know, some of them have, you know, you know, dead heads here and there. They've been stung. Um, they've been the dead for a while and just been thrown in the back. Um, it's just clutter, you know. So you want to go through there, get rid of the nonsense, get rid of the extra rock, and get rid of all the clutter because you're going to be putting in all new stuff. You're going to be putting in new mulch, which is like new sand. You know, you're going to be putting in. Uh, maybe new rock. Maybe you do have some new rocks. You're going to put in some new rock. Uh, you know, it's going to be just like, you know, doing your landscaping. You're going to be designing it just like you want it to look. It's going to look beautiful. So first off, you want to start off with like a base rock. Um, you want to find like a really sturdy base rock for the bottom of your structure. And that base rock, you know, if it has some holes and crevices, that's great because you kind of want to to have you know, uh, a cave-like look to it so that your fish can go in and out and uh, they have a, like a lot of different areas that they can kind of call their home. So uh, like what I did here in the corner here, I have one base rock in the corner and then I kind of built off that. So you take that one base rock, make sure it's nice, sturdy and steady, steady and big 
and then build off that as to where you want to go. Now, when you form other, you know, when you go off of that one base rock, you want to make sure that you find other rocks that have a lot of holes, crevices. Um, you got to think of like your corals and your frags. Uh, depends on what you have. If you even have corals, uh, you know, you might not even have corals. So um, if you do, you want to find rocks that have a lot of different options where you can put a frag here, a coral here. Think ahead. Think about where you're going to be putting your, your corals and your frags. Or just make sure that you, you know, whatever you do use, you have a lot of options. And make sure wherever you do put the rocks, everything is very secure. Uh, some people use, um, you know, a, a type of glue, you know, that's safe for the tank to actually glue their rocks together. Some don't. I myself, I don't glue any of my rocks together. Um, I just make sure that they're very sturdy because a lot of times I'm taking things down and then, you know, repositioning them. So, uh, so it's basically up to you whether or not you want to go up the glue route. If you want to glue things, that's more of a, you know, thing that you do before you actually start the tank. So it's not really a remodel thing. It's more of a, you know, you would do the rock with a brand new tank. And when you go through your tank and then you're thinking about your corals and where you want to place them, you know, make sure that there's enough room in between all your corals for growth. Uh, you want to make sure that there's, you know, if you have stinging corals, that they're not close to any other corals where they could possibly sting the other corals, because uh, that happens all the time. You don't realize how long your stingers are until you look and all of a sudden, you know, it's stinging the other coral and that coral has huge damage to it at that point. Uh, so you want to make sure that it not only has room for growth, it has room, you know, to not sting the other corals around it. Also think about like colors. So color contrast is great. So like if you have a coral that's purple and then you have a coral that's say a bright orange, those two colors would look amazing together. So you, you know, you look at the colors of the different corals that you have and then kind of place them accordingly and it was just gonna you know, mesh really well and look really, really good together. Now it all depends on what shape tank you have as to uh, you know, how you're gonna place your rock. Some people don't like their rock to be up towards the back of the glass. They like it to be right in the center of the tank. They don't want it touching any of the edges. I myself have my rock leaning against the back I like it when my star polyps grow along the back. That's something that I like myself. Um, I also use the back as support for my rock. So, um, you know, those that do glue their rocks, they probably don't need the back as much for support, but I myself use the back of the tank. Um, but, you know, someone who would have like a peninsula tank, uh, my father used to have a peninsula tank. You know, we built that, we built that aquascape where, you know, obviously it wasn't touching any, any of the sides and it came out right in the middle of the tank too. Also, if you have a cube, you know, you could build it right in the center of the cube too. So it all depends on what shape and size you have of, of, an, of aquarium as to how you're gonna build your aquascaping for that tank. And always remember that the more rock you put in there, the smaller your tank's gonna look. So sometimes more is not better. So uh, if you have extra rock, it's just kind of clutter. You want to get rid of the clutter and just make sure that what you're using is the most efficient and beneficial for what you need. And you don't really need any of the extra. So, you know, the extra rock is just going to take up space. It's going to be less swimming room for the fish, areas for the coral, and ultimately it's going to make your fish tank looks smaller because it's going to take away the volume up above. So now I'm going to go through my tank here. I'm going to show you some of the things that I've done to change up my tank. Adding a little bit more sand. I took out a lot of the rock. Um, you know, replaced the corals in different areas. And um, I'm going to go through and show you exactly what I've done. So I actually placed my leather here in the corner. Um, it's actually really large and I used to have it in the center of the tank and it took up so much room. So I actually put the leather here and the devil's hand right here. The devil's hand actually has more room now than it did before. So it actually can spread out more, which is nice because the devil hand was almost actually dying on me because it was, the two of them are attached onto the same rock and I haven't been able to split the two. 
and then up above. You can kind of see here that the brain that I placed here, I'm gonna have to move him because he's actually being covered now by the leather. So that's just one placement that I did wrong. And I placed my Galaxia here um, with the, you know, the current is right on it because Galaxias love current, but it's not close to any coral. So you can kind of see one of, you can see the stingers there. They, uh, you know, it's not anywhere close to any corals where actually it can hit anything. So I made sure that it's far enough out um, and placed correctly so that it will not sting anything around it. Down here I have my bubble. I might ultimately have to move this guy here, my Ganapora, over because he's getting in a little bit close. You always got to keep watch of that. Now I move this big rock here that has all these polyps. It used to be down at the bottom. So I actually moved it up towards the top and I placed it on this little pedestal here and then place polyps around the pedestal. So I moved it back, which gave me more sand room for my corals. And then I placed the Mani right above there, which the Mani actually has a little bit more room here. And it was, it was before back in the corner on the right hand side of the tank. I always got to keep a close eye on my torches, make sure that they're not stinging anyone, especially with my scully right there. Um, I've kept a close eye on this guy and make sure that his stingers aren't coming anywhere close enough. I got my scully high enough um, right now, but I'm keeping a very close eye on these guys. Like I said, I always have my hands in my tank, like literally 24 seven. So I'm constantly moving things around and, uh, and adjusting as a needed. Also keeping a, I'm also keeping a close eye on this guy right here. You know, these chocolate chip stars, this is a red one. Um, they're not always considered reef safe, so you have to be really careful. Um, if they get on any of your corals, uh, you don't really know if you can trust them, so. Alright guys, so now that we're all finished with aquascaping, there are some very special fish and corals that I want to show you that I picked up this past weekend when I went to the wholesaler. So uh, here we go. I have some of them in my 125. I was actually trying to avoid them. I didn't want you to see them when I was going through the tank. So I want to show you, uh, I have three pieces in my 125 and I have one piece in my 67 gallon in my bedroom. So uh, let's go see them, I wanna show you. So my tank right now, it's on night mode. So it's actually dimming down and the lights are a little bit more blue than they should be. So, but these are my Australian wild caught Duncans. They're absolutely amazing and they're not even completely out right now. They're absolutely beautiful. They're not even completely fully out right now, but when they are, they look amazing. All right, then back here, this is the one that I was trying to kind of avoid. Get out of the way, Mr. Rast. Jeez, y'all think it's like feeding time, so they're in the way. Uh, this is an Australian Monopora. So I saw this, excuse me guys, I saw this and uh, it just really caught my eye. It was absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful and huge. And here are the other two. Here's my fishies. Okay, so I needed some new Nemos and this is what I got. I know you see him, don't you? Okay, so I got just a regular black clownfish that you see him right there. He was so healthy looking. Um, 
So I, I just, he really caught my eye. So I got him. And then I got this guy right here, which is a black storm clownfish. They only had one. So I couldn't get a pair. They only had one. And so I kind of took my chances by getting the regular black one, hoping that they would get along. And I was so lucky that they actually do love each other. Uh, but you know what? You have to be so careful with Perkulas uh, because, you know, they can tear each other apart if they do not like each other. But this storm, oh, um, hello, he uh, uh, hello, um, yeah, there we go. All right, so this storm, oh my God. I've seen him at, I've seen him there, like, I don't know how many times and I've just drooled every time I've seen this guy. So I finally brought him home. And I am happy, one happy girl. All right, guys, thank you for watching my video. And again, thank you for watching my channel. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to my channel. Also hit the bell notification so you're aware of all my new videos to come. And share, share this video if you find it helpful for anybody else who would love to see this video also. So thanks again, guys. Uh, stay tuned for my next video and I will see you again shortly.